YouTube, it's Missy, and today I'm going to be doing the bookshelf tour part two. I do want to say thank you so much to everyone who has commented on my last video saying how they enjoyed all of the mini reviews, how they liked all the information that I gave, how it wasn't too long. Um, just I appreciate the feedback because it helps me make better videos in the future. Now that I know that you guys don't mind the length, I will again do mini reviews on all of these books that I have read on this shelf here. I again will share all of the information for every book that I have read. There will be timestamps below so you can skip around if you want. And if you don't like long videos but you do want to see all of the books, just speed me up and then you can like skip all of my talking and then just get to the actual book covers and the information that I put on the sidebar. And uh, that's it. So uh, let's get started on the bookshelf tour. Um, I will be doing handheld again. Uh, I will do it slower this time. I did see how much um, movement I did in my last video. So this one will be a little bit slower. This is an overview of just the front of my bookshelf and yes, there is Pennywise. I don't know what that guy's name is. I haven't watched uh, this movie in a very, very long time. I need to find out what his name is because he's so creepy. Behind it is a postcard from Penelope. It's a quote by Lois Carroll. Let me share with you really quick. It's going to fall. The quote says, it would be so nice if something made sense for a change, but it's backwards um, and, and it's supposed to be like a mirror effect. Anyways, thanks Penelope, I do enjoy that. This here is a necklace that I got in my Penelope Gilbert package. Um, I, can't, I can't remember the author's name of Penelope Gilbert. I do apologize, of course I will leave that information down below but it's so beautiful and I just leave, leave it here on my bookcase and then I of course have my teacup um, bookmark that the Maddie Hatter gave me it's so cute I love it I think she made it for me and then I have up here some letters from um, people that I trade with I, I keep everything that I get from my subscribers and my friends and so there is that. Let's get on with the actual books themselves. The first books I have on this shelf is The Twilight Saga by Stephanie Meyer. There's Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse, and Breaking Dawn. I know these books get a lot of hate. I will be the first one to tell you I don't care. I absolutely love this series. Uh, it was the first YA series that I've ever read. This is what got me into YA. I keep it for nostalgia reasons. They are all really cheesy, but I want to, I, I don't care. Twilight, I've read, I want to say like five times. I hate New Moon because I don't like Jacob. I don't think she should have ever been with Jacob. Um, Eclipse is okay. And of course, Breaking Dawn is when... Uh, Renesmee comes up so I've read this one a couple times too it always makes me cry and in the middle there is book two this is in three parts book two is all about Jacob and I always skip that so I'll read book one when um, Bella is getting like ready to get married and then book three after she has the baby um, so yeah whatever you think about these books I will keep them forever um, in my collection because I love them and I love the fact that this is what got me hooked on YA in general. The next book I have here is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. This is a YA contemporary about a very awkward teen going into high school for the first time, meeting older kids, getting friends, getting drunk, doing drugs for the first time, and then realizing that there was an issue from his past that comes not to haunt him but comes to the forefront so that way he can cope with um, those feelings and it, it's not something that I knew was going to happen so 
I was kind of taken aback by it, but I really did enjoy this book. It's very small. If you liked the movie, I would pick up the book because the book is better, obviously. And I really, really, really like that it's um, written in letter form to someone that we never find out who it is. And there's lots of music in here, so it's kind of like there is a soundtrack to the book itself, which I've looked up all of these um, songs after I've read this book and like listened to them all, and they're all very good songs. So there's that one. The next book I have here is The Guardian, book two um, of the Feather Book series by Abra Ebner. I read these books on my Kindle, I want to say in like 2011, 2010. This is the first Angel Book series I have ever read, and I absolutely loved them. Um, I got them on my Kindle. They were like $4.99 each. I had to read them back to back. And when I found it, the second book at Book Off last year, I had to purchase the book in its physical form. Um, this is a very good angel book that's never talked about. This is like, <laughs> well, it's because the author said some kinds of, she said some things a long time ago that probably rubbed people the wrong way. She said she was a better writer than Stephanie Meyer, and her book is on par writing-wise as Stephanie Meyer, so I don't know what she's talking about. It's a very entertaining um, angel series. It has a great love story. Uh, and yeah, it, she's definitely not a better writer than Marissa Meyer, so I don't know what she's talking about. The next book I have here is The Monstermologist by Rick Yancey. This is the first book in his quartet of The Monstermologist. I think that's what the whole series is called. This is a turtle book. I think it's called The Turtle Hardback. Um, so the cover there's no dust jacket which really bugged me when I first got it but now it's just okay I don't care um this is a very very good book it's a historical fiction about a scientist and a boy who lives with him um I guess the boy's kind of like adopted the scientist used to have a man that worked for him who was the boy's dad and when the parents died in like a house fire or something the boy started living with the monstermologist and now he is a um, apprentice to what he does. The monstermologist is basically what it says. It's a person who studies monsters and in this first book we have a monster that has no head and the mouth is in the stomach. I can't remember what that monster is called. Of course, I will leave it down below so you guys can see. If you like monster books, I would definitely pick up this book. The next book on my list is The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. I read this book last year, I think. It was a buddy read, and this is so good. I think I gave this book five stars. It is about a woman who writes biographies, and that's like her main thing. She lives in a bookstore, or at least her father owns a bookstore, and she's grown up there, and he is a collector of like high-quality um, old books so he's also a traitor and in this book our main character gets a letter in the mail asking her to come to a cottage um, in the country and the author of this letter is a well-known writer and our main character doesn't really feel like writing a biography about this woman because she's heard some funny things about about her and she end, she ends up going and and checking it out she figures that she'll just leave if she doesn't like it and the woman ends up being super fascinating and the story that unfolds is the best mystery I swear, if you like mysteries, you'll definitely love this. There is just so many ways it could have gone, and I'm just so happy with the ending and where it went. So, so good. Next we have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is the first book I've ever read by her, and I am curious to read more books by her. I gave this book five stars. It was absolutely fantastic. It is a adult book book about the future and what could happen 
if there was a flu-like virus that wiped out most of the world. This takes place in America around the Great Lakes, and there is a traveling circus orchestra where they do, not circus, um, half of the people do an orchestra, so they play instruments. The other half of them do like a... Uh, like a theater troupe, and they go from city to city to bring happiness and boost the morale of the survivors of this flu-like virus. Um, there are several points of view in this story, and I enjoyed them all immensely. The way that this book is written is fantastic. For some reason, even though it jumps around from past to present, there's no confusion. It is worth all the hype. I know that this was talked about a ton last year, and if you haven't picked up this book and you like, it, I guess it's a dystopian um, fiction. I, if you like that kind of stuff, and if you like contemporary, because it is kind of contemporary as well, um, I would pick this up. It's so, so good. The next book I have here is Nimona. Oh my gosh, this is a graphic novel written by Noelle Stevenson. It is so good. It's about villains. So we have here our main villain. This is his nemesis, and this girl right here um, wants to be his sidekick. So it's like an apprentice of this villain. This man's name is Blackheart, and this is Nimona. Um, just the whole dynamic is so fascinating. They live in a world where there is technology, but also dragons and castles. So it's very whimsical, and I, I don't know what it's called, but there's several things going on. So like I said, Blackheart is the main villain of the town. This man here works for the corporation that protects the town. They're both nemesis. Uh, they used to be friends way back when. And then we have Nimona, who one day just barges into Blackheart's castle and, like, says, hey, I'm going to be your new sidekick. And he's like, I don't work with others. And she's like, um, I'm working with you anyway. And, yeah, the story goes from there. I'm not going to say any more because I don't want to spoil it. But it's so, so good. Like I said, it's a graphic novel. The pages are so cute and colorful. Um, let's see another one. There's another page. I love the punk rock hairstyle of this chick. She, it's so like um, t early 2000s. I don't think people do this anymore, but her head is shaved and she's got these like side hairs going on and bangs. I knew a girl in college who had her hair like that in high school. Um, I don't think people do that anymore. It's kind of like punk emo or something. But um, yeah, loved it. Definitely pick it up if you haven't already. The next book I have here is Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lee Angles. This is adapted and illustrated by Hope Larson. I have read the original A Wrinkle in Time and I didn't enjoy it as much as I did this graphic novel. I think I gave this graphic novel four or five stars. This story itself is a middle grade classic. It's about three kids who go off on an adventure to search for the girl's father but he's like in another dimension. They meet these old women who teach them how to do this world jumping and it's all very bizarre. This is a sci-fi. The reason why I didn't like the original is because it lacked pictures. Like this story needs to be told in pictures so you can see what you are reading because it is a little complex in nature when it comes because it's like sci-fi so it talks about things that you want to be able to see and it just works so well in graphic novel form. If you like um, A Wrinkle in Time I would definitely pick up this graphic novel. I'm telling you it makes the story ten times better. So there's that. I absolutely loved it. The next book I have here is The Trees Crept In and The Trees Crept In by Dawn Kurtigich. This is her second book that she's written. This book came out last year. I read it last year. I thought it was fantastic. It's a horror mystery. It's about two sisters who go 
to their aunt's house. She lives in the woods, and the aunt tells them that they're not allowed to ever leave, that they're trapped here in the house now because if they go through the woods, they'll be murdered. Um, and the girls freak out about that. And slowly over many, many years, the main character, what is her name? I can't remember what her name is. But she witnesses the trees getting closer like every year they're closer and closer and she needs to find a way to leave the house protect her sister find food because they're running out of food um, it's very strange and you may not like it at the very beginning like it it starts off very strange and you're like oh okay this is cool and then it gets pretty redundant in the middle and then you're thinking oh I don't know if I like this book anymore. And then the end hits you and you're like, oh, that's why the middle happened. So you definitely need to read all the way through. The middle makes a lot more sense once you get to the end. I definitely enjoyed this book. I think I gave it four stars. Okay, the next book I have here is The Dead House by Don Kurtigich. Again, uh, this book is too tall for my shelf, so I have to hold it. This is Dawn's first book that she wrote. I think she wrote this in 2015. I had to pre-order this because it just looked so good. It's about a girl who goes to a boarding school that is in walking distance of an asylum that she also was at. Uh, it's such a strange book, and I can't really describe the characters. This girl says she has a sister. Nobody has seen her sister, so we're assuming that she is either, that she has like split personality, or she's making it up, but, but it's, it's scary. It actually is scary at times, and this is a mixed media, so there are pictures in here, and um, there are like cop interviews and stuff like that. So good. I think I gave this book five stars. I will have to double check, but if you haven't read this book and you do like YA horror mysteries, I would definitely pick this book up. It is a win. Okay, the next book, this shelf is just full of books that don't fit standing upright, is the first book in the Robert Langdon uh, series. Um, I keep wanting to say quartet. I don't know if that's how you say books that are for. Um, this is by Dan Brown. This is Angels and Demons. Uh, this is about a historian. So Robert Langdon has is like an art historian. I think that's what he is. And this is also a conspiracy book and a religious conspiracy book. So one day Robert Langdon is um, asked to go to... Uh, the Vatican maybe to look at something because it doesn't make any sense and um, then there's this mystery that he has to solve and there's people trying to kill him and it's all very fast paced and wonderful. I absolutely love Dan Brown's writing and I cannot wait to continue on with this series. I have seen this movie and I've watched um, the Da Vinci Code, but I haven't read The Da Vinci Code, so I do need to read that one. The next book I have here is The Host by Stephanie Meyer. This is her YA sci-fi. Um, if you've heard anything about Stephanie Meyer's writing, you know that the Twilight books are junk and that this sci-fi standalone is ten times better. And I have to say, writing style-wise, it is. Um, it was a fun read. It's a standalone for now. I have heard that Stephanie Meyer was going to be making a sequel, but it hasn't come out yet. This is about an alien named Wanda who takes over a human body. Um, the human's name is Melanie, and when she takes over this body, she's supposed to be able to take control completely, but Melanie never disappears. She's still there, and they fight to take over the body, if that makes sense. Um, but then they end up compromising, so that way um, Wanda can escape her her room that she's in and be released into the wild, if you will. Um, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just that these aliens have come to Earth 
to make it a better place. So they're trying to turn Earth into a utopia. There's a lot of famine and war and murder and all these things that the aliens have witnessed that they feel is not good. And so as they take over the humans, the world becomes a better place to live. But there are those rebels that don't leave the bodies and they're still there and the aliens have to fight for control of the body that they are in. And this is a love story and a survival story and of course an alien story. It's all very good. Um, like I said, it's a standalone for now so it's, it definitely ends not on a cliffhanger, it ends like it should. But if there is a sequel, I will definitely get it. Okay, the very last book in that giant book pile. Th those books here are all too tall for this shelf, so they have to lie down. But the last book in that little stack is Scary Stories Treasury by Alvin Schwartz. I grew up on these stories. These are... This is a um, collection of the three books that have been written by Alvin Schwartz. And again, they're all short stories. They're all um, children, middle grade horror stories. They're all very scary. And even when I was in college, um, I was reading these books when I went camping and it freaked me out. I couldn't, I couldn't go to sleep that night. So even though they're like pretty cheesy, they're scary at the same time. If you like short stories, if you like scary stories, if you like ghost stories, um, I would definitely pick up this book or these books. I don't remember what the, each individual, let me see if I can open it. I can't remember what each individual book is called. I think it's like scary stories, more scary stories and scary stories three or something like that. Anyways, that does have illustrations in it. That's all very creepy. I'm going to drop the book if I try to open it anymore. But, yes, five stars for every single story in this book. I would definitely pick it up. The next book on this shelf is Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. This is the very first book that Gillian Flynn has written. And this is my least favorite of the three that I've read by her. Um, our main character, Libby Day, is um, a terrible human being. I absolutely despise her and it took me about four months to finish this book because I just hated the main character so much. Um, Libby Day is the youngest in the Day family. One day when she was about, was she five? I think she was like five. Um, her entire family was murdered so her mom and her two or three other sisters were all killed. Um, at the beginning of the book, you realize that Libby has pointed a finger at her brother for killing the entire family. So her brother is in prison for it. But there's a lot of people out there that believe that the brother is innocent. Um, there is a group of people who continuously to tr try to convince the courts to release the brother because they feel that there's not enough evidence to support him being the murderer of the entire family. And so Libby ends up having to figure out if she saw what really happened that night or if she assumed that she knew what happened that night. It's a good mystery thriller. I did not expect what came of it. Again, it's my least favorite because Libby is an awful piece of shit. I hated her so, so much. She's just pathetic. I just, I really, really could, could not stand reading her voice. The next book on this shelf is The Edge, or On the Edge of Gone by Corrine Duavis. This is a owns voice story. It's sci-fi. It's about a girl who has um, autism, and her sister is transgender, and there is a comet coming to annihilate the Earth, and everyone is leaving in spaceships to escape the destruction that will be taking place. And um, it's, the main character has to figure out a way to get her and her family, her, her sister and her mom, on the spacecraft um, so that way they escape the comet and what happens with all of that. 
It's a very realistic look on autism. I really enjoyed reading it because as a mom of autism, you want to make sure that the way it's written is exactly how autism works. Like it doesn't you don't want to have like a cartoony kind of autism. And she definitely has her tics and it works very well in the book and it's very realistic. Um you know, a sci-fi realism. I really enjoyed this story. I think I gave it five stars. I do need to pick up the actual book itself because, as you can see, this is an arc. But very good. If you like sci-fi and you like diversity because there is a transgender girl in here and autism, I would definitely pick it up. It's good. Next, we have the first two books in the Asylum trilogy. There is Asylum and Sanctum, and then there is also... Catacomb, which I started and haven't finished yet, story of my life. These books are horror uh, mysteries. They have pictures in them. Let me find a creepy picture. There's a creepy picture. Each book is a different color, so all of these pictures are going to be with a green hue. All of these pictures have a blue hue. Let me find a, see that. These two books are about an asylum that is turned into a college. Our main character is uh, accepted to go to this college over the summer to kind of like see how it is, see if he likes it, and to take some classes. While he's there, he has this funny feeling and um, ends up exploring the basement of this college asylum and comes to find out that there's a man that ran the asylum, the director. His name is Dan Crawford, and the boy's name is also Dan Crawford. So he's kind of freaking out that the director of this asylum has the same name as him. And in books one and two, you learn about the history of the director. You learn a lot about like this secret society that took place during this asylum. You learn about the patients and what's going to happen now with the, the college that is being run there, how the entire town knows. And not only does Dan Crawford, our main character, have to deal with all of this, but he has recruited two friends that were also with him during the summer. It's not a camp, but during the summertime when they were all at this college trying to get like extra credit for college courses to go to this school. Um, all three of them have to deal with everything that's happening here. And it's very spooky. Definitely a fun horror, YA horror series. Like I said, I started Catacomb a while ago, and I still need to finish it. I would definitely read these if you like creepy pictures, asylums, horror, um, secret societies, and all of that. Okay, the next book on this shelf is Animal Farm by George Orwell. This is a classic. I absolutely love this uh, cover. I took me a while to find it. I needed it in my life and so I bought it. Um, I read this book a few years ago and I also read this in high school. So when I read it in high school I hated this book. When I read it a few years ago I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. It made me so angry. I couldn't believe the way society works. Like it, it's, it actually happens exactly like it happens in Animal Farm. So it's about a farm with all these animals that um, take over. So they kick out the farmer that lives there and they start their own democracy. So at the beginning it's like, no animal is left behind, all animals are created equal. And then it starts to evolve where the pigs become more in control and then every, every uh, couple months the laws of the farm change to where it's not all animals are created equal. Those that walk on four legs are better than those that walk on two. And then it gets even more um, 
like, not racist, but just more where the pigs are dominant over this farm. And it's just, uh, it's so sad. And by the end, you're thinking, you're no different than the humans. Like, what is wrong with you? Absolutely loved this story. If you read Animal Farm in high school and hated it, I would pick it up as an adult. It's definitely different when you have an adult perspective on reading this. Such a good book. I gave this one five stars. The next book is another classic. This is Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I think I gave this book three stars. Um, I can't get rid of it because it's not mine. It's my husband's. But if I could get rid of it, I would. It's not the most thrilling and engaging read. It's very strange. It's about a man that lives in England and decides to go to the Congo. Is it the Congo? Um, it, he goes to a river in Africa and he needs to meet a man there but the boat that he's supposed to sail on is broken and so he has to stay with these people that live there until the boat is fixed and you see how the white people have taken over and they've enslaved the black people that live there um, to help like make you know buildings for them and get them food and it's all very strange this book is very flowery and it's very hard to read so it's got that that writing from, oh, when was this published? Uh, this this book was first written in 1902, and so it's really hard to understand the English in this writing. Um, if you like classics, you might want to pick this up. It's very, very short. It just took me forever to read, because I just couldn't understand it very well. And yeah, it it's three stars. Not very entertaining. Okay, the next two books on my shelf are Insanity and Figment, which is books one and two of the Insanity uh, series by Cameron Jace. As you can see, these covers are gorgeous. It's a Alice in Wonderland retelling, and this is so cool because all of the Wonderland creatures have been transformed into humans. So, Alice, we meet her in the asylum. She has killed a whole school bus of children. She doesn't remember doing it. She doesn't know why she did it. And during her stay in the asylum, she meets Professor Caterpillar. And yes, he is a hookah smoking man who is also a murderer. And he talks about the um, Cheshire Cat and how he has been killing kids and she needs to help solve the mystery. So she goes out and tries to catch the Cheshire Cat. And the Cheshire Cat doesn't think that she's the real Alice. And then in this one, it's just a continuation of the first. So we're still trying to figure out what the motive is for the Cheshire Cat to kill people. Who is he working for? Who are his um, comrades in this murder spree? And Alice is still trying to figure out how she is involved in all this. Like, she has these dreams about Wonderland, but that's what she thinks they are. She thinks they are dreams. She doesn't believe that she is the Alice from the books, and um, we don't know either. So, very, very good Alice in Wonderland retelling. Extremely dark. It's got lots of blood. Um, I do own books three and four. Five is still at on Amazon, but six is no longer available. I think that's how it goes. Maybe it's seven. Uh, I need them all in my life. I love them so much. If you like Alice in Wonderland, I would definitely pick up these retellings because they are brilliant. Okay, so those were all of the back books. Let's move on to the front books. The first book I have here is The Woman in Black by Susan Hill. This is a tiny little book. It's super cute. Uh, I can't remember who publishes this. Who is it? It's published by Profile Books. I've never heard of them before. Um, I absolutely love this cover and I really like purple so it's a win-win for me. If you've seen the movie with Daniel Radcliffe, you'll like the book better because obviously books are better than movies. 
and this is a ghost story. Susan Hill writes like this is a old book, like this is a classic. That's how well she writes. But this was written in 1980 or 1981, something like that. It's about a man who lives in England and has to travel to a country um, estate to pick up paperwork from a house that has been not abandoned. The woman that lived there has died and so they are trying to clean up the paperwork there so that way they can sell the house. But the house is haunted and the entire town that this house is like built in, the, the town is afraid of this house. Nobody goes near it. Um, there's lots of crying and strange noises after dark around this estate. And so our main character has to figure out how to leave this house and not be trapped there with the ghost and to get the paperwork in order and not be raveled by the town folk. Now, what I do want to say about the book and the movie is that the town people themselves are very different in each medium. I haven't done a book versus movie, which I wanted to do last year when I read this book. But basically, the town people in this story are very nice to our main character. They're very supportive. They help him out a lot. In the movie, they're all very um, skittish about the whole topic. They don't want to talk to him. They're very rude. And there's this whole extra layer to the movie about missing kids that has nothing to do with the book which drove me crazy because why would they add that to the storyline the book itself is brilliant on its own they didn't need to add that extra kid arc to it because there are no kids in the book so why would they add that to the movie anyways that's hollywood for you um definitely pick up this book if you like ghost stories and you like gothic horror because it's definitely written like a classic. I loved it so much. Next I have this gorgeous trilogy by A.G. Howard. This is an Alice in Wonderland retelling. We have Splintered, Unhinged, Ensnared, and Untamed, which is the collection of novellas for the trilogy. I all these books are five stars. They are the best. These are my favorite YA stories. Like, out of everything that I've read, I think this is my absolute favorite YA story to date. Maybe I'm biased because it's a Y, it's a Alice in Wonderland retelling, but maybe because it's got like one of the best love stories in it as well. And it's just whimsical and dark and Oh, it's just so good. So we have Alyssa, we have Morpheus, and we have Jeb. Um, Alyssa is our main character. Her mother is in asylum because she says that she can talk to plants and she hears bugs talking. Alyssa is worried that she's going to turn into her mother and also have to be in an asylum for going crazy, but finds out that her mom is not crazy, that her mom is for real. And Morpheus makes sure she knows this. Morpheus is from Wonderland. He can turn into a moth and they are childhood friends and um, she comes to depend on Morpheus for a lot of reasons which I won't say. And then we have Jeb here, Alyssa's high school sweetheart, who is now mixed up in this whole Wonderland escapade and he needs to figure out how to maneuver between the real world and the fantasy world. Oh, it's so good. It's it's dark. It's twisted. The Queen of Hearts is insane like she is supposed to be. It's everything you want in an Alice in Wonderland retelling. And then we have this here. This is Untamed, the collection of novellas that go along with these books here. I absolutely loved them. I read all of them on my Kindle, but then when this came out, it had one more story that wasn't, um, that I hadn't had before, and it was just amazing. It just ties up all the books 
and it was just such a good, uh, it made me cry. I could gush. I could gush about these books forever. They are my absolute favorites. A.G. Howard is brilliant. I love her, and these books are amazing. Five stars, all of them, forever and ever. Okay, the next book on my shelf is Darkness Becomes Her. This is the first book in the Gods and Monsters series by Kelly Keaton. This is a book about a girl who is different from everybody else. She has very thick silver hair. She's got this scarily, ear, like she's got eerie eyes. They kind of like glow. I thought they were purple, but when I'm, I'm reading the second book right now, and she says that they're green, but they're like brilliantly green, almost like luminescent. Like, they, they glow, almost. Um, anyways, I don't want to say too much about the book because that will spoil it. But she's a kick-ass character. She is a bounty hunter. She's a teenager. Um, she is living in um, New Orleans, where Katrina hit. So the place that she's staying at is the Garden District, and all of the houses are dilapidated, falling apart. There's a lot of um, damage because of the flooding that happened during Katrina. And this book is also an urban fantasy. So we have vampires and witches and shapeshifters like werewolves. This is also um, a mythology book. So there's gods, like ancient like Greek gods in here mixed as well. It's so good and I gave this book five stars I absolutely loved it and I am currently on chapter seven of the sequel so I can't wait to finish that one because like I said it's such a good book next we have these two books here aren't these the best covers they are so gorgeous we have Jacoby and Beastly Bones by William Ritter um, this author floored me when I first read Jacoby back in 2015. His book is insanely fun to read. It is a mystery. It's YA. Our main character's name is Abigail Rook and she comes to the United States back in the late 1800s, early 1900s I think, sometime around there. And she's looking for work and she comes across an advertisement or an ad um, for an apprentice for Jacoby. Now Jacoby is a paranormal detective. So um, not the typical detective looking for normal criminals. All of his criminals are supernatural in nature. And the town that they live in, it's New England, so somewhere in New Hampshire or Maine, somewhere up there, um, the police force is very weary of Jacoby. I mean, they know that he is brilliant. He's kind of like a Sherlock Holmes character, but for paranormal. They know he's brilliant, but they don't like using him because he's kind of a laughing stock. I mean, he's very eccentric. He's has this weird hat that he wears and this really long scarf, and people always make fun of him and because they fear of what he might say and what he might find out. Because essentially they don't want to they don't want to know that there is such thing as a supernatural like being or creature. They are hoping that um, that it's just a regular criminal. Anyways, I absolutely love this mystery series. Like I said, we have Jacoby and Beastly Bones. There is a third book that I own called Ghostly Echoes that I have not read yet. It came out last year. Again, I don't know what I'm waiting for. And then William Ritter's fourth and final book of the Jacoby series should be coming out this year. It is bittersweet for me because I do love these books so much and I wished that they would just continue on forever. But unfortunately, that can't be the case. Some things have to end. And if you love mysteries and you like whimsical and you like Sherlock Holmes and you like paranormal or supernatural, I would definitely pick up these YA books. They are fabulous. And the next series on my shelf is the Caster Chronicles. There are four books in all 
by Cami Garcia and Margaret Stoll. So there is beautiful creatures, beautiful darkness, beautiful chaos, and beautiful redemption. Aren't they just delicious covers? I absolutely love the silver granite coloring to each book and then you have the pastel um, vibrant titles. It's just so pretty on your shelf. This is a witch series. Um, the first book is about Ethan Waite and a new girl called Lena Duquesne that come into his town. Ethan Waite is a basketball player. He has dreams of this girl that he's been having forever and all of a sudden one day Lena Duquesne shows up at his school and it is the girl of his dreams. He doesn't know how um, they are related but he needs to find out and the book goes from there. It is a love story. It is a like a witch story. It does talk about the afterlife. The witches in this story are very fascinating. Um, they have elemental powers and they can also be light or dark. Lena right now is light but on her 16th birthday or her 16th moon she has to decide whether she will be, well she can't actually decide, it's decided for her. Fate decides whether she will turn light or dark and she is terrified to go on the dark side. Um, it's just a really great series and that that's all I can say about it. I know a lot of people have heard of the beautiful creatures but they don't want to read the books or they read the first one and they didn't like it so they never continued but it's a really good well written um, a beautiful you know love story about two like star-crossed lovers it's just so good and um, I don't know what else to say about it it's just it's good you should pick it up if you like urban fantasy if you like witches um, yeah pick it up the next series I have on my bookshelf is the Parasol Protectorate series by Gail Carriger. This is an adult urban fantasy set in London during the late 1800s, during like the Victorian era. Um, we have Soulless here, and then we have Changeless, and then we have Blameless and then Heartless and Timeless. Now our main character, which she's on all of these covers, our main character here is Alexis Terabody, or Alexia Terabody, I keep saying Alexis. Alexia Terabody, and she is considered soulless, which means she has no soul. In this world, in order to become a werewolf, a vampire, or a ghost, you need to have excess soul. Um, in order to change into them. And it's just a fun, incredibly fun series to read. So Alexis is unlike any other woman in London. She is well read. She is into mechanics. She wants to learn more about science. And the rest of the ladies are all talking about marriage and babies and the newest fashion. And she's not into that. Um, I love the fashion in this book. I love the mechanicals. I love the dirigibles. I can never say that word properly. Um, but those are, you know, the flying machines. <laughs> Duh. So it is steampunky and lovely. And Alexia is smart and sassy and hilarious. And she gets mixed up with a werewolf named Lord Macon. Now, Lord Macon is one of the best characters I've read. Um, there is so many good characters in these books and I can't remember their names at the moment just because I'm put on the spot right now by filming this. But Lord Macon has a, um, he's the alpha, he has a beta, I can't remember the beta's name right now, who is clever and brilliant and well-spoken and he actually takes care of Lord Macon who is the alpha of the werewolf clan that they um, are from. And then of course we have Alexia's best friend who is a vampire and again he is 
smart and entertaining and he's got this plethora of boys that he has around him for entertainment purposes. He is, um, of course, gay and he loves all of his boys and it's just, <laughs> I just loved this series so much. It's got diversity and it's got a lesbian character and of course a, a gay vampire and love and um, mechanical monsters and of course the supernatural and ghosts and a, like a hidden agenda and it's just it's so good it's so stinking good I believe that this is the first book or the first series that Gail Carriger wrote I do own her other two series which is the prequel to this one and then the sequel to this series which I will show you guys in later videos um, if you like urban fantasy if you like steampunk if you like vampires and werewolves and ghosts pick up this hilarious series please um, there are a lot of books on my shelves that I need people to read ASAP and this is one of them. Pick these up. They are amazing. Five stars. Almost all of them got five stars. I think these two right here got four stars, but the rest got fives. So, so good. Okay, next we have Succubus Blues, which is the first book in the Georgina Kincaid um, series by Rochelle Mead. This is her adult urban fantasy. Um, this was amazing, and this is what want, made me want to read The Vampire Academy because this is the first book that I read by Rochelle Mead, and it was so fun. Um, Succubus Blues is about a girl or a woman named Georgina Kincaid who is a succubus, and a succubus is, you know, um, a, a woman who seduces men, and while they are having sex, she is sucking some of their life force away. So she lowers their their um, life, like, age. So if they were going to die at 60, and after they have sex, maybe she took five years from them, so instead of 60, they'll die at 55. And that's how she continues to stay alive. She has to suck the life force out of them through seduction, of men or women, it, it, it doesn't matter as long as she's getting some kind of physical contact in order to suck their life force. Anyways, um, that's not that's not the main part of the story though. I mean, she is a succubus, and that is cool, you know, in itself. But there is a deeper a deeper storyline to this. So Georgina works in a bookstore, and she absolutely loves this certain writer and one day the writer comes into the bookstore and she falls in love with them and so it's an entire series of her falling in love slowly with this writer and whether or not they can become an item because if they are physical she will take his life force and you know then you know he'll die and she doesn't want that but on top of that is you know, her boss, who is a demon. She's got two or three best friends that are vampires. She has a be another best friend that is an angel who drinks and smokes, so that's weird. And um, there's something bad happens to her in every single book, and she has to figure out a way to fix it. <laughs> so lots of bad things happen to this woman, and you just have to read it and find out. It's so good. The writing is so good. Georgina Kincaid is spicy and sarcastic and, you know, sometimes not a nice person, but she's so lovable at the same time. I really enjoyed this series. I listened to, I, I read the first book in physical form and then I listened to the rest on audio and the narrator is amazing and she is Georgina Kincaid. I, I couldn't imagine any other narrator being her. I do need to purchase the other books in the series. This one I found at Book Off for a dollar so I was excited when I found it. I do need to find the other ones. Not that they're expensive because this is a mass market paperback so they're like six seven dollars on Amazon but 
you know, I'm cheap and I want to buy them all for a dollar. Um, so definitely pick this up. If you don't like the Vampire Academy, I would try Rochelle Mead's adult books because maybe you'll like her adult books instead. We are down to just my Stephen King collection on this shelf. So the first one we have here is Salem's Lot. Um, this is the illustrated edition. It is about vampires, about a man who goes to a town. Um, it's called Jerusalem's Lot, or for short, Salem's Lot. And he sees this house on the hill that he wants to purchase. This house was very strange when he was a child and he has this weird sensation that he needs to own this house but when he goes to go buy it he finds out that it has already been purchased and the people that move in are they run a furniture business but the main character thinks that it's strange and that they aren't who they say they are and so he needs to investigate and it turns out that they are vampires and the entire town is being kind of like taken over. So you have to, the, the main character has to find people that he can um, rally up with so that way they can kill the vampires off. And it's very good. This is the first vampire book that I've read by Stephen King. I don't know if he has any other vampire books. I haven't read all of his books. I have read a ton of them, but not all of them. If there are more vampire books, let me know, because I own almost all of his works already. I just haven't gotten to them all. Definitely pick this book up if you like vampires. It's not scary, in my opinion. Um, again, I have a high threshold for scary. This, to me, wasn't scary, but it was very good. Next, we have Gerald's Game. This is... The, fir the main character is a woman, and she is locked in handcuffs when we first meet her in her cabin home on a lake. And this is a survival story. She has to try to get out of these handcuffs. We don't know why she's in these handcuffs. Uh, obviously, you learn in the first chapter why she's in the handcuffs, but of course I don't want to tell you that or I'll spoil it. But just know that this woman is in handcuffs and she needs to get out and there is a certain amount of time that she is stuck in it and then the aftermath of being stuck in the handcuffs and what happens. It is mostly a contemporary mystery with a little bit of magical realism built in because she thinks she sees a supernatural being but she doesn't know and neither do we. Next we have Carrie. Uh, this is pretty famous. There is a movie. I, a lot of Stephen King's books have movies. I really enjoyed this one. This is his first book ever written. It was written in 1974, I think, or five. Uh, it's about a woman or, you know, a, a girl. This is the only YA book he has as well, I think. Uh, our main character's name's Carrie. She comes from a very religious household. Her mom is an extremely religious person, and she doesn't tell Carrie anything about herself. Um, so when we meet Carrie, she's going to high school, and she gets her period, and that's like the beginning of her trauma throughout the rest of the book. She gets her period. She doesn't know what it is. She's 17. She's never had it before. And her mom now says that she's dirty and unclean because now that she has had her period, she's ripe for the taking. Um, very, her mom is extremely weird. And poor Carrie has to deal with all of this nonsense. And the kids at school treat her like garbage. And so she retaliates. And it was fantastic. Carrie has telekinesis. And so um, she learns... in. She learns to hone her powers, and it goes from there. Very good book. It's super short. It's one of the shortest books um, Stephen King has read. And now when it comes to Stephen King, I'll make a, a video solely on my Stephen King books later on. But if you've never read Stephen King before, um, this is a good start because, one, it's short, and, two, it shows how he writes. Um... He always has his books in parts. So it'll be like chapter one with all these different parts, and then you get to chapter two with all these different parts. So that way you get familiar um, on how his 
books are set up. And um, yeah, if you haven't read Carrie and you do like Stephen King, I would definitely pick it up. It's a fast read. By the way, this was my rainbow that used to be over here. So this next book is called The Dark Half. I read this in high school, so I'm a little rusty on all of the details. A lot of the books that I will talk about later in other bookshelf tours I read in high school, so I do need a refresher. Um, but this one is about a writer who is in a bit of a writing slump. So he has writer's block. He doesn't know what he's going to write next. And all of a sudden, he has this strange feeling that he's being watched. And then, and then this weird person comes into play. And he doesn't know if he's real or if he is in his head. But it's kind of like his evil twin and it gets it gets scary really quickly not scary for me as a reader but scary for the writer and his family um very good this has a movie to it the movie was actually pretty good as well um the carry oh i should probably go back to those books salem's lot and gerald's game i've never watched a movie by them that were for those books um, Carrie, I watched both of the movies. The original is better than the newer version. The newer version is awful. And then we have Dark Half. This movie was actually really good. If you want to watch the movie first before reading the book, because reading books are kind of like special features when it comes to movie adaptations. So whichever way works for you, there is a movie if you would rather read or watch the movie than read the book. Um, they're both good. The next book I have here is The Shining. Um, this is the scariest book that I have read by Stephen King and my number one horror novel that I've read um, ever. Uh, this is about a little boy who has The Shining, which means that he can see ghosts. He can, um... He has like a, a ghosty friend that helps him. He know he can ha he has like premonitions about what's going to happen in the future. And he's also telepathic, so he can read people's minds. And The Shining takes place at the Overlook Hotel. Again, this is a movie. Um, the father is Jack Nicholson um, in the movie. And um, the father goes a little cuckoo while caretaking this abandoned um, hotel during the winter months. Because the winter, um, the where the hotel is located up in the mountains, all the roads freeze over and there's too much snow. So there's not enough people to go up there to work on them in order for tourists to go and use the hotel. So they close up shop for the winter and they need a caretaker to continually make sure that the windows are all, you know, maintained and the hotel is maintained and the, um, the heating stays consistent and so forth. So our little friend has to go, Danny, has to live with his father and his mom at this, you know, desolate hotel during the winter months and bad things happen. He has a feeling that this hotel is going to be bad and he has a feeling that the hotel is going to be bad before they even get to the hotel and then it begets it just gets much much worse. It's so bad and this book was so good and I listened to it on audio and it made me like scream out loud a few times uh, because it was so scary and I was trying to drive to work and I'm like no no it, it was really really good. So if you like this movie, I would pick up the book instead because Stephen King had a little fight with the director of this movie, Stanley Kubrick, because he thought that he wasn't going in the right direction. And a lot of people like the movie. Stephen King stands by his thoughts that the movie is garbage and his book is just amazing. So I would definitely pick this book up. I have read the sequel, uh, Dr. Sleep. I don't own it yet, 
but that one is also very good. The next book we have here, which is the green book of the rainbow, is Desperation. Um, this is my first Stephen King book that I ever read, and it was my favorite up until I read The Shining. It's about a town that is taken over by an evil entity, and a lot of the things are happening on Route 66, a route I think it's Route 66. Um, so tourists are coming through, and there's a police officer that are gathering them up and keeping them hostage. I don't know if it's to feed the dark entity or what, but the entire town is gone when the main characters arrive, and it's freaking them out, and they are, they're all in jail, and they all have to try to break out of this small town jail and leave this scary place, um, but there's a lot of demons and monsters and ghoulish things that take place before they can escape. And it is so good. Um, it's pretty thick. This, this edition in particular is pretty thick. Although I read the hardback cover in high school and that one was also a ton of pages. So yeah. If you haven't, if you like Stephen King and you haven't read this book yet, you really need to pick it up. The the way Stephen King writes, and this is for all of his books, and like I said, this is the first book I've ever read by him. I didn't realize you could smell words. Hopefully that makes sense. So the way he describes things in this book, like one scene in the story. Um, the cop spits onto the windshield of the car, and the people in the back of the police car can smell this um, this spit. It's kind of like a loogie. They can smell it, and it smells like rotten meat, and it's sliding down the glass, and it makes you so grossed out. And that was when I was like, oh my god, this is the most amazing writer ever, ever. I mean, I could smell the loogie on this fictional window. And that was my turning point. That was me loving Stephen King for life. Just amazing. Okay, the blue book of my rainbow is It. And, um, yes. Oh, Pennywise. This book is over a thousand pages. It's about 1300 pages. This is, this book right here is the reason why I purchased all of these Hodar um, editions because it's just so good. It's simple. I love the blue, the balloon. Um, <laughs> it's so good. If you're scared of clowns, the book has a clown in it, but that's not all it is. So I have a video that I will put up in the cards reviewing this book. This is my most popular um, video to date. There's about 17,000 views on this video, which is insane to me because I don't think it's a very good review, but it's been watched a bunch of times. Basically, our monster in this story is kind of like a Bogart on Harry Potter. Whatever you are afraid of is what it will turn into. Now, it can attack adults, but it mostly attacks children. And it this is just such a good book because it's got different points of view. There's about six kids and they all meet each other when they're little and they all make this like pact and during this time they're trying to find this monster who has been attacking children and they want to kill him and then we meet these kids as adults and they have to come back because the monster is still at large and it's so if you like character driven books Stephen King is amazing at, at character driven books. He talks about the past, the future, the present. Um, all the children have a backstory. It's all well thought out and put together. Even though that this book jumps from um, past to present a bunch, uh, it never feels overwhelming. It's just 
brilliantly written. It's such a good story. Five stars. All right, the very last book on this shelf is Insomnia, again by Stephen King, and this is my pink or my purple book. Pink is Pet Cemetery. This is purple. Um, Insomnia is about an old man. I want to say he's like in his 60s, and his wife uh, takes care of him, and one day she dies, and after her death, he becomes an insomniac. So the insomnia starts off slow where he loses an hour or two a night, and then it gets to the point where he can't sleep at all. And if you can see the scissors here and this little line here, um, because he isn't sleeping anymore, he's able to see people's auras. And there is strings that stick out of the people's heads that connect them to other people. And there is a goblin of some sort, some kind of monster that is clipping people's strings. And it sounds really silly as I'm saying it right now, but it was so good. And this is the first book that I've read by Stephen King where our main character is an elderly person. And uh, yeah, he has to find a way to stop the, the goblin from hurting other people and like destroying the world. I guess you could say that. The world as the man knows it. It's really good. Um, I, like I, I read this in high school. I read it so long ago. But it was really good when I read it. And I'm sure I will love it if I read it again. I plan on rereading all of the books that I read in high school. Sometime maybe next year. Because I want to refresh uh, my memory on all of these wonderful Stephen King stories. Um, and that's it. That was all of the books. Let me just put them all back and then I can say my goodbyes. Okay, and there you have it. Those are all of the books on my second shelf. Okay, as you can see, the sun has changed when we first started these videos this morning. Uh, it was about 12 in the afternoon. Now it's 5.30. I've been filming all day. The sun is still, it's shining greatly on my face. Um, that was the second shelf of this bookshelf tour. Thank you so much for sticking with me and watching it if you did watch the whole thing. Um, and look forward to the third shelf right here, which will be my last very long bookshelf tour because this is the last one where I have to do all of my mini reviews on. The rest of the bookshelves will be title, cover, and a small synopsis if I know them. And that is it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!